The SpaceX Falcon 9 is a marvel of the modern world. It's the most reliable rocket ever, with over 230 straight successful launches, and it's also the cheapest rocket. When the space race began, it cost $120,000 to send a kilogram to low Earth orbit. Falcon 9 now does the same for about 2% of that number, just $2,500. The Falcon 9 is so good, in fact, that it raises an interesting question. Where do we go from here? Is it possible for rockets to get any better than a 100% success rate at a 98% discount? Or is this the end of the tech tree? Well, I've got good news. In 10 years, the Falcon 9 will look like the iPhone 1, and launching a kilogram to orbit might only take $10. This is the future of rocketry. Rockets are just flying fuel tanks. A fully fueled Falcon 9 weighs over 1.2 million pounds, but only 50,000 pounds or 4% is the payload that it's trying to carry to orbit. The payload is stored in the fairing on top of the rocket, and below it are two stages. The first stage has nine rocket engines, hence Falcon 9, and carries the rocket off the ground and out of the atmosphere. The second stage then separates, revealing a secret 10th engine that will move the rocket into its final orbit. Nearly everything that is not fairing or engine is just fuel. The magic of the Falcon 9, the single secret that let it be cheaper than anything else in the market, is reusability. Before SpaceX, every rocket was a one-time use. But after separation, the Falcon 9 first stage turns around, comes back to Earth, and lands vertically, so it can be refueled and launched again. The current SpaceX record is 16 flights for a single booster, saving tens of millions of dollars with every landing. But there's still room for improvement. SpaceX is throwing out the second stage of every rocket, letting it burn up in the atmosphere after the mission is done. And that's 25% of the rocket's total cost. Stoke Space is a startup trying to solve this problem that stumped SpaceX for the Falcon 9. They want to build a second stage that can survive re-entry even when it's moving five times faster than Falcon 9's reusable stage. And if they do, the reward may well be worth it. Stoke claimed in an early pitch deck that this could get the price down to $250 per kilogram. That would be 10 times cheaper than the current SpaceX price. SpaceX is also, of course, working on second stage reusability, and they're doing it in a big way. Their fully reusable rocket is Starship, which would be able to carry 100,000 kilograms, the equivalent of 10 African elephants, to orbit. Elon teased a potential minimum cost per launch of just $10 million for Starship, which would equate to a mind-blowing $100 per kilogram. The hardest part of rocketry is that you have to carry your fuel with you to space. Great rockets, therefore, love to pack in as much power as possible into each unit of fuel. They call this specific impulse, or ISP, and they measure it in seconds, meaning how many seconds can it accelerate its own mass. Think of it this way, cars have miles per gallon and rockets have ISP. SpaceX uses two different engines today, the Merlin for Falcon 9 and the Raptor for Starship. Merlin's ISP is 282 seconds at sea level and 311 seconds at vacuum. The Raptor's is 327 seconds at sea level and 363 seconds at vacuum. As this implies, rockets are more complicated than cars. The ISP depends on the air pressure. To maximize ISP, you want the gas that's coming out of the nozzle to be exactly the same pressure as the air that moves around it. If it comes out too high, that gas will expand, losing forward thrust by spraying it out the sides, but if it's too low, it'll actually cave in on itself and potentially damage your engine. And of course, this is a dynamic process. As you're moving up in the atmosphere, there is less and less atmosphere above you, which means that your total pressure is dropping. Ideally, you would want to make your nozzle grow longer and longer throughout the flight to give your gases more time to expand before being released, but you can't, at least with a normal engine. An alternate engine design called an aerospike solves this problem by deleting half of the rocket nozzle and firing its engines at a central spike that focuses the rocket energy. You can think of this as creating a virtual nozzle that expands and contracts along with pressure increases and decreases, but it's always centered, so you're always efficient. Lockheed Martin's XRS-2200, for instance, was an aerospike engine that demonstrated 339 seconds of ISP at sea level and 436 seconds in vacuum. That's 20% more efficient in vacuum. The XRS 2200 is unfortunately no longer with us, but a few commercial companies are trying to create aerospike engines of their own, including our friends Stoke Space. But my personal favorite next-gen engine is actually something entirely different and even more efficient than an aerospike engine. It's called a rotating detonation engine, and it's exactly as cool as it sounds. 
It turns out that normal engines don't actually detonate, they deflagrate. Basically, they burn slower. The reason that all rockets don't detonate is that detonation is hard to control. Each detonation makes a shockwave, so the shockwaves are dangerous, and so the solution they found is this rotation concept. They make the detonation not go straight down the barrel of the engine, but around it instead. It turns out that this strategy can be 25% more efficient at extracting energy from the same amount of fuel. NASA just performed a successful test of one in January 2023, and Japan recently tried such an engine on orbit as well. And I get it. These engines are hard to build. People have struggled to build aerospike engines and rotating detonation engines in the past. But the reasons why people are pessimistic about these don't actually make sense to me. They sound like sort of the same kind of reasons that people would have said about why landing rockets and reusing first stages was previously impossible. But of course, we can do that now, and I believe that someday we will make aerospike engines and rotating detonation engines work. We can build better rockets, and once we do, things will get even crazier. Rockets are propulsion on hard mode. They're made, of course, to fly in space, where there's no air, so they don't intake any air from the atmosphere, and they get no lift from their wings like a normal plane would. The highest ISP for a chemical propellant in a rocket engine was 542 seconds, but a normal jet engine on a passenger 747 might achieve closer to 6,000 seconds of ISP. So call me crazy, but what if we just used a plane as the first stage of a rocket? This is the strategy that Virgin Orbit tried with their Launcher 1 vehicle, which I personally prefer to pronounce Launcheroni, but that's just me. The Launcheroni carried a rocket on a plane, dropped it, and launched it from midair. Strato Launch is trying something similar. Like, look at this thing, it's epic. This thing is a big plane, <laughs> and it's carrying a rocket. These first stages, simply by breathing air and generating lift with their wings, are able to be much more efficient, 10 times more efficient than a rocket, which is a potential huge cost saver. And I think you're understanding the trend here, things can get even crazier than that. There's a company called Spin Launch, which to use a scientific word, yeets its payloads into orbit. It puts them on a 300 foot tall centrifuge. It uses electric power to spin them up well past the speed of sound, where they pull 10,000 Gs before letting go. Another startup, Longshot Space, is building an orbital gun that literally shoots its payload as a projectile. They claim that they can achieve $10 per kilogram to orbit. This was actually tried before by the HARP program, which actually successfully fired a projectile 110 miles into the air. And scientists have even dreamed up, but to my knowledge never actually built, the idea for an orbital railgun. A railgun, if you're not familiar, is basically just a gun that runs with magnetism. It accelerates payloads extremely quickly and shoots them into orbit. It sounds crazy, and it is. One paper I found suggested that it would cost just $2 per kilogram to orbit if it actually worked. <laughs> It's easy to fall into the trap that everything not invented yet is impossible, but that's not how invention works. Over time, it gets easier to recognize when you're going down a dead end and your tools are better to build things with. So each individual invention makes the next one that much easier. And the best part about all of this is that inventions don't get worse over time. Once we figure out how rotating detonation engines work, or even spin launches, how we can make them viable, we're not going to forget that. We're not going to get worse at launching things into orbit over time. So back to the original question of the video, can we do any better than the Falcon 9? The answer is obviously yes. I mean, think about it this way. What do you think the SpaceX engineers are going to do once they are done with Starship? Are they just gonna sit and do nothing and chill? Like, I don't think so. I don't think Elon's gonna allow that. I think what's going to happen instead is that they're going to start working on these next-gen technologies that are building the future of rocketry. 